our main goal when designing the gameplay and the combat of Lords of the Fallen was to create a challenging and rewarding gameplay experience. We had to think about the enemies, how they can be challenging but not frustrating. We also had to think about all the combat mechanics, how they are balanced against each other, how they are balanced against the enemies and the bosses. When we were designing the weapons for Lots of the Fallen, we tried to meet the expectations of the players. So we tried to reflect this by not only the looks, but also the animation sets of the weapons. One of the most important things in the boss fights is that we wanted that the core combat mechanics, which you apply also to normal enemies, are used in these fights. One of the most satisfying moments in the game is when you get that special perked weapon from your boss and start smashing your enemies with it, which is really cool. The pace of leveling up your character and getting experience or grinding is uh, up to you. We have different occasions for you to do that. We wanted to make sure that replaying Lords of the Fallen is very challenging as well. There's a lot of new loot to find, new armors, new weapons. The enemies will of course be a lot harder. Parkin, our main hero, he's Earth's worst criminal and world's biggest hope. And we really wanted that dualism to sort of shine throughout the way that we've implemented the storyline. So we wanted to make sure that at the beginning of the game, the player explores the human realm. This is pretty much everything he knows at the start. Then he gets into a demonic realm. And he needs to sort of see the other side. And only then, when he's back into the human realm, the player will be ready to face the fallen god. We really wanted to take special care of having that perspective play a major role. Lords of the Fallen is by far our biggest game yet, and this time around it's big in terms of gameplay as well. Quite a lot of effort went into the combat system specifically, and there's quite a lot of depth to it. Tech-wise, instead of using a commercial engine, we actually wrote our own engine called Fletch, which supported PC, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and iOS, and now obviously PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. A lot of people really called us crazy that we are developing our own engine, but in the end I think it was really worth it. When thinking about the biggest challenges, bringing existing tech over to a new generation of hardware um, is one thing but making it shine and optimize it for a specific platform is really a totally different story. We put a lot of effort into a new lighting and material system. Lighting really makes the difference on the current generation of, of gaming hardware, and that's what also the artists really try to push. Fletch currently is capable of handling hundreds of dynamic lights, all casting shadows, projected textures. Every surface in the game is able to reflect light, to bounce off indirect diffuse lighting. So we put a lot of effort into these kind of systems. And a lot of work has been done to get the physics integration right as well. A good example for this would be uh, how the cloth simulation interacts with the character animations and the time and effort put into this really shows. To create this world of Lords of the Fallen we had the real big task to create a really immersive and detailed world within this next console generation. We choose the very complex lighting approach because most people would really expect that this game is dark and mature and grey and black. We really wanted to make a unique style. We came up with the instancing idea which really helped us to get these thousands of assets into the next generation consoles. And with the support of hundreds of artists around the world, we were really happy with the result and Fletch is really capable of these really modern techniques. Lords of the Fallen is a very challenging game. We wanted to make sure that when playing this game, the process of learning and mastering your skills and ultimately overcoming the challenge is the basis and fun of the entertainment. Variety of opponents and variety of types of challenges and fights. You, the player, will adjust 
against these situations and fighting the same type of opponent with a different arm or different shield or a different weapon or just with the different moves is definitely going to feel different. One of the most important thing for us, bosses. We wanted to make sure that there's a certain type of symmetry in how they were designed and executed. So there's a feeling of amplification whenever you meet a boss. But at the same time, we wanted to match it with the reward. For each one single boss, there will be a special way to defeat him, and this will give you a unique look. Probably the most work-heavy part was trying to seek out the things that are on both sides of this very, very fine line between challenging but fun and rewarding and frustrating. So wanted to make sure that we seek out certain elements of the gameplay that would be tedious. We have almost a dozen weapon types. The fast weapons, you can have perfect timing while fighting. With heavier weapons, you can charge them for extra damage. With staffs, for example, you can double hit the enemy while executing just one attack. With armors, we have three main types. You can mix and match them quite easily, so you're not stuck with one class for the whole game. And, of course, you can also mix and match different parts from different armors. We also have a variety of shields with different movesets. You can parry, you can perform a shield bash. On top of all your equipment, you get the crafting system that features runes. You have fire runes or poison runes, and then those runes also have grades, and you can imbue those runes into all types of your equipment, so shields, armors, weapons, and they get more powerful when you progress through the game. The origins of magic are linked to the three archetypes, a rogue, a cleric, and a warrior. Every archetype is a different play style. For example, choosing a rogue, you're telling the game that you want to kill the opponents faster and in a more stealthy way, while choosing the cleric tells the game that you want to regenerate your health and get more protective. And when you're choosing a warrior, you're going for the raw power approach. The level design process started in a rather simple way. We knew that we wanted to create monumental levels with monumental geometry. We wanted the players to have alternate paths through which they could traverse the levels so that a player could take a straightforward approach and attack the enemy face to face or maybe sneak behind the enemy and make a difficult fight. A rather simpler one. We knew that we wanted to place secret areas throughout the game so the player would be rewarded with useful items for exploring not-so-obvious areas. Credibility is a tough word. A lot of people think it's the same as realism. Well, really, it's not. It's not necessary to be realistic in order to be credible. While working on our project, we wanted to focus on credibility rather than realism. It applies to various parts of our world, starting from architecture, through various objects, and finishing on weapons and armors. I mean, our armors might not look like something a guy would wear in reality, but hey, our main hero is not just any guy. He's huge, he's bulky, and he would be able to wear all that metal without any problems. By the way, did you see Harkin cosplayer wearing one of our armors? It didn't really restrict his movements much, and he was able to wear it all day long. Making the dark fantasy world look at the same time appealing to a mainstream player wasn't really very easy and one of the ways in which we tried to achieve that was through colors. We kept iterating our color palettes until they felt both dark but also attractive visually at the same time. Bardzo charakterystyczną cechą gry Lords of the Fallen wizualnie jest dojrzałość w połączeniu z wyraźną stylizacją przedstawionego świata. 
Bardzo zależało nam na tym, aby emocje wywołane grą były zbliżone do tych, jakie towarzyszą oglądaniu zwiastunów filmowych czy filmów. Nie da się ukryć, że nawet tak wystylizowana i bogata w kolory gra jak Lord of the Fallen jest wciąż grą mroczną. Światła w grze używamy po to, aby podkreślić głębie lokacji i wydobyć z ciemności kształty i sylwetki na przykład przeciwników. Dopełnieniem całości są realistycznie zaprojektowane i wykonane materiały oraz bogactwo efektów specjalnych, których używamy w broniach, postaciach, jak i w elementach otoczenia. Jedną z głównych inspiracji w naszej grze były obrazy Zdzisława Bychcińskiego, który doskonale łączył architekturę z organiką. Bardzo nam się to podejście podobało. Chcieliśmy uzyskać podobne odczucie łączenia w, u nas. Nie możemy zapominać o Warhammerze, szczególnie podręcznikach Warhammer Fantasy i magazynie White Wolf, w których mieliśmy naprawdę fajne referencje i, i fajne postacie, które nam bardzo pasowały. Staraliśmy reinterpretować się, dostosować się do naszej gry. Świat Lords of the Fallen jest światem surowym, ciężkim do przeżycia. Bardzo nam się podobało, jak zostało to przedstawione w Skyrimie. Chcieliśmy do tego nawiązać. Nasza gra jest trudniejsza, wymagająca więcej od gracza i myślę, że to dobrze. Jeśli chodzi o ekipunek, naszą główną inspiracją były karty Tarota. Wiele gier podchodzi do, do przedstawiania menu za pomocą ikon albo przedstawiając je w sposób kart takich do gry, jak w karcianych rpg -ach. U nas jest troszkę inne podejście. Zastosowaliśmy mocną stylizację, kompozycję inną, bardzo symetryczną, często mocne kolory. 